All right, y'all, good morning, afternoon, or evening, whenever you're tuning in. I'm grateful to have y'all here, and I'm sure this is gonna be a very interesting video. Nothing I've done like this before. Denzel Washington, I've been a fan of his movies and just overall approach to life for a long time now. The Equalizer series, Flight, John Q, Book of Eli, He Got Game, Remember the Titans, Training Day, uh, Antoine Fisher, all classics in my eyes. Uh, and it, I'm just, it, I'm curious to see what his approach about race is in today's climate. It's hectic, it's evil, a lot of bashing, belittling. Um, as you can see, I'm not an African American, so I haven't gone through things that other people have through history. And I do uh, acknowledge the fact that things are not, are, are not perfect, haven't always been perfect. Uh, but we got to grow, we got to get better, we got to realize there's one race, the human race. Uh, and if we could get back to living life through this, the Bible, basic instructions before leaving Earth, I think, th I know things would be a whole lot better. Um, but I'm not very familiar with Larry Elder. I know he's big in the political scene, so uh, it'll be interesting to see his take on this as well. But that's enough talking. Let's get into it. This is about Denzel Washington, not about his acting, which is great. No, this is about his perspective. He's probably the only person in Hollywood speaking the truth about so-called race relations. Now, don't get me wrong. He's nobody is Republican. He probably wouldn't have voted for Donald Trump if you paid him. But for black people in particular, do you think that we can truly make change as things are right now? Well, it starts in the home. You know, if the father's not in the home, the boy will find the father in the streets. Mm. Yeah, I saw it in my generation and every generation before me and, and everyone since. It starts in the home. You know, if the streets raise you, then the judge becomes your mother and you know, and prison becomes your home. <laughs> this interviewer was determined, determined to get Denzel Washington to go BMW. For those of you new to the El Dorado Nation, mm. BMW stands for bitch, moan, and whine, and Denzel Washington wasn't having it. I want to just ask you, though, about the issue of race relations, because the film touches upon that. Uh, Right now, under President Obama, over the last eight years, in your mind, has race, have race relations improved under his leadership? I, you know, race relationships have to do with race relationships. You're white or whatever you are. I'm black or whatever. I, we're standing here talking now. That's how we get things done. You can't legislate love. Mm. The President of the United States can't legislate us into liking each other. We have to step forward and ask questions about each other and engage. There's no law that says, oh, because I'm president, you all got to get along now. So it's up to us. He tried again. Denzel, talk to me about systemic, institutional, structural, foundational, endemic racism. And Denzel Washington wasn't going with it. Mm -mm. There's been so many protests mm -mm. in America, especially during the election. Black Lives Matter movement, for example, Sweat. and those issues. Has, has that movement in particular, the Black Lives Matter movement, helped race relations or not in America? Well, in listen, we live in America, and in America we have the freedom to express ourselves. We shouldn't take that for granted. So whatever the movements are, whether you agree with them or don't, they have the right to express themselves. Facts. So that's one of the great things about being in this country, that you do have the right to protest. You see, here's the deal. Denzel Washington is not a victocrat. He knows damn well why so many blacks are involved in the criminal justice system. It was something I read where you talked about your people from Mount Vernon saying that, you know, like they've done like 40 years in a penitentiary together. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, and, you know, incarceration rates in America has been a problem, especially as, as opposed to minorities. And Roman delves into this, the, the issues around the, the legal system. Do you think we've made any headway in the I legal I think it's system? more important to make headway in our own house. By the time the system comes into play, it. the damage is done. They're not locking up seven-year-olds. Yeah, yeah. You know, I, I was in Chicago a couple of three, four weeks ago, and we saw these little kids on bikes with masks on the side of their head, like five or six of them. And the driver said, yeah, they're little yummies. I said, who? He said, little, little yummies. Look up, Google little yummy. Mm. Little yummy was an 11-year-old murderer. Wow. And you look at his picture, you'll see the headshot of him, and he's like this. And he got murdered at 11 by a 14-year-old. Wow. Who's doing life now, and a 16-year-old. That makes no sense. You, you blame the system? Where was his father? Yeah. It starts in the house. It mm. starts in the home. And yeah, well, well, my father got locked up. Well, where was his father? Yeah. 
and Mr. Washington talked about the Spiral friends effect. he grew up with and what happened to them. Like I, I did talk about my three closest friends and they did, you know, 15 to 25, one did 28, this and that. I was the only one of the three that had a father in my life, even though my parents were together, but I still had a father who was a gentle man and a good example, yeah. and they didn't. We can blame the system if we want, but they didn't lock any of us up at seven. Yeah. We were all doing enough to get locked up at 13. My parents sent me in another direction. They didn't have anybody to help them, and they kept doing what they was doing. The formula for success, hard work, focus, commitment, persistence, perseverance, sacrifice, and believing in yourself. Mm. But remember, dreams without goals are just dreams, and they ultimately fuel disappointment. So have dreams, but have goals, life goals, yearly goals, monthly goals, daily goals. I try to give myself a goal every day. Sometimes it's just to not curse somebody out. <laughs> Simple goals, but we all been there, have Denzel. goals. We've all been there. And understand that to achieve these goals, you must apply discipline and consistency. In order to achieve your goals, you must apply discipline, which you have already done, and consistency every day, not just on Tuesday and miss a few days. You have to work at it every day. You have to plan every day. You've heard the saying, we don't plan to fail. We fail to plan. Hard work works. Mm. Working Amen. really hard is what successful people do. And in this text, tweet, twerk world that you've grown up in, <laughs> remember, just because you're doing a lot more doesn't mean you're getting a lot more done. Remember that. Just because you're doing a lot more doesn't mean you're getting a lot more done. Don't confuse movement with progress. Mm. My mother told me, she said, yeah, because you can run in place all the time and never get anywhere. So continue to strive, continue to have goals, continue to Wise woman. progress. Quite a contrast from this. Being a black man in America isn't easy. The hunt is on. And you're the prey. All I'm saying is, all I'm saying is, survive. To this, we all have different talents. Some of you will be doctors, some lawyers, some scientists, some educators, some nurses, some teachers. Yeah, okay. <laughs> some preachers. The most selfish thing you can do in this world is help someone else. Why is it selfish? Because the gratification, the goodness that comes to you, the good feeling, the good feeling that I get from helping others, nothing's better than that. Not, not jewelry, not big house I have, not the cars, but the, the, it's the joy. That's where the joy is in helping others. That's where the success is. And at the top of Denzel Washington's list of oh, things man. to do to become successful, put God first. Amen. In helping others. Talk to him. Finally, I pray that you put your slippers way under the bed tonight so that when you wake up in the morning, you have to get on your knees and pray to reach them. Mm. <laughs> and while, you, when, while you're down there, say thank you for grace. Thank you for mercy. Thank you for understanding. Thank you for wisdom. Thank you for parents. Thank you for love. Thank you for kindness. Thank you for humility. Thank you for peace. Thank you for prosperity. Say thank you in advance 
for what's already yours. It's how I live my life. That's why I, why I am, one of the reasons why I am today. Say thank you in advance for what is already yours. True desire in the heart for anything good is God's proof to you sent beforehand to indicate that it's yours already. That's that Holy Spirit in you. I'll say it again. He gave it to us. True desire in the heart, that itch that you have, whatever it is you want to do, that thing that you want to do to help others and to, to grow and to make money, that desire, that itch, that's God's proof to you sent beforehand already to indicate that it's yours. And anything you want good, you can have. So claim it. Work hard to get it. When you get it, reach back. Pull someone else up. Each one, teach one. Don't just aspire to make a living. Aspire to make a difference. Mm. Now, because this... Hold on, Larry. Hold on, Larry. I can't... I, I, 20 seconds. I'm fired up. I don't know about y'all, but I'm fired up. After the black conservatives said good things about Denzel Washington. Hold on, bring it back, Larry. Let me give you the full respect. Now, because this dastardly black conservative said good things about Denzel Washington, I hope he doesn't get canceled. I don't think he will. I'm Larry oh, Oda, and we've got a country to save. <laughs> I'll see you next time. Wow. Y'all go subscribe to Larry, man. Y'all go subscribe. Ladies and fellas, y'all go subscribe to Larry. He... Wow, I'm, I said I'm fired up and I'm more than fired up because some people take that as like a, a, a knock and like he's, he's, he's just pointing the finger at you. No, he's saying that nobody, no matter what the situation, no matter what your skin color, no matter where you come from, mother, father, nobody can stop you from being good and doing good in this world, making a difference, not just making a living, not just getting by, not just getting up, going through the motions. Like you can truly leave a long lasting positive impact on this world. But the message nowadays is so uh, just deteriorating, so evil, so just woe is me that everybody is, is a victim mindset. Like he, what, do you, what do you say, vicodemics or something like that, that Larry uh, touched on really well, really uh, pungent in this point. Uh, but it, nobody's out to get you. God blessed you with another day. If you're watching this video, if you can breathe life, no matter what, what past you have, no matter what betrayals and hurts and evils that you've experienced, it's all going to be worked together for the greater good. But some people don't know that. Some people don't know God. They don't know this. But know that if you're if you're standing here today, man or woman, uh, boy or girl, wherever you're at in the world, you can go after the things that you want to. Nobody is, is, is holding you down. Nobody's suppressing you. You're not a victim. Stop, stop believing that. If you put in the hard work day after day, that's consistency, you can get to wherever you want to go. And I'm not saying you could be a professional basketball player, a professional volleyball player. You might not want to be anyways because nowadays men taking over women's sports, women not going into men's sports, but... It, it's nuts in this world today, but don't let anybody tell you that, that you can't go after and achieve the goals that you want to. Set daily goals, small goals. It's cool to have dreams. It's okay to want to uh, be a professional doctor and or it's okay to want to be like a professional athlete or something like that. But if, 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 just, if you have to settle for being a doctor, that's not settling. You're making a huge difference. You're changing lives day in and day out, making people happy, uh, saving lives, uplifting others. But that's the 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 outcome aspect of, of working hard but it starts at home like he said at the very beginning mothers fathers fellas it's not cool to have as many women as you can it's not cool to to leave your wife to leave your kids there's nothing cool about that what's cool what's manly what's admirable and respectable is a man that does what he's supposed to day after day discipline and takes care of what he put into this world uplifts them shows them the word of god shows them how to love shows them how to take care of the chores around the house how to work hard not accept a handout not just you know, think that the, the world owes you something because it doesn't. No matter what my color is, no matter what your color is, nobody owes us anything. God said each day is going to have enough troubles of its own. Actually, Jesus said that. And, but you got to work for what you want. And you might not always get what you want. That just is what it is. But if you want to actually maintain something sustainable, something positive, something that's going to make a difference in, a, in a, a more happy and peaceful world, it starts with this, man. This is what is respectable and admirable. Fellas, be loyal to your wife. Ladies, be loyal to your husband. Make it work. It's gonna. It's not gonna be easy. You're going to have trials and tribulations, but you gotta work through those. As, as, as long as nobody's cheating on on the their spouse, you gotta work through those situations. It's worth it in the long run, and your kids will pay the ultimate sacrifice if you don't work it out. 
work that thing out at home, man. The, the overwhelming principles of that, he was very eloquent, eloquent, but he was very simple in his approach, but it, common sense isn't common anymore. People can't understand exactly what he's saying if they've never heard it, and, and they just, they just don't know. They don't know what they don't know, but I hope that this video gets across to the right people and the overwhelming message and what I took from it is love God, love people. Love God, that means put those slippers under the bed like he said, and when you first get up in the morning, drop to your knees and say thank you for today. Because there's a lot of people that weren't promised today. A lot of people aren't here today. That stuff that you think is is top tier importance, you can't take it with you. You can't strap a U-Haul to a hearse. The, the rear view mirror is a whole lot smaller than the front windshield for a reason. Eyes forward, control what you can control right now. Stop focusing on yesterday. It, it has no impact on now and moving forward. Even if you don't have a mother, even if you don't have a father, you can still set the tone for the future. You can still set the tone for your kids and all those around you. You can spread the right message. You can have a positive influence on everybody you come in contact with. Love God, love people. That's where it starts. That's how we're gonna make a difference. No matter what the color of your skin tone is, one race, human race, we all bleed red. Sounds cliche, but that's the real deal and that's what I believe. Let me know y'all thoughts down below. I'm really curious to hear about it, wherever you come from, whatever you look like. I'm, I genuinely wanna know what you've been through and, and what your approach to this is. Do you think what he said is fact or fiction? Y'all let me know. I love y'all. Subscribe, like, notification bell if you're new. Let me know what other videos I gotta check out. For right now, Godspeed, I'm gone.